Frank, many physicists now are talking about multiple universes with the term multiverse. Do you believe that that's reality? I believe in one version of the multiverse, namely the quantum mechanical multiverse. And how does that work? What quantum mechanics tells us is that if quantum mechanics applies to everything without exception, it's obvious it applies to atoms, but we physicists like to apply the same set of laws to all of reality. So it seems reasonable to me, many other physicists agree with me, that it should apply not only to atoms, but to chairs, to people, to this entire Earth, to the cosmos. If that's true, then what must be happening right now is that out in reality, there are an uncountable number, an uncountable infinity of you's and me's having this same conversation. That is the multiverse. All of these possibilities out there really exist Not, not just a theoretical mathematical model. No, it's not a theoretical mathematical it model. Really it existing. really exists. And yet we're only aware of one. We're only aware of one. It's because our particular nature, quantum mechanics also tells us that unless you do a very delicate, very difficult to do experiment, um, it's not even clear a human being's mentality could do this because we are anchored to one particular universe. But it is in principle possible for a mentality, a intelligent being, to be aware of these different versions of itself. Um, and we can see these interaction, interacting versions really easily only at the atomic level. The atoms are not, as we are, so anchored to one particular universe. That's basically how quantum mechanics works. Electrons basically move back and forth between so the various to universes. just make it simple, in every given second, one second of what we have is, seems like absolute time, you know, it's relative, but in one second, how many different versions of our conversation will be uh, proliferating someplace? The way of thinking about it now, I think the more correct way, is that what we have are an uncountable number of you's and me's, which are at the start identical. We start this conversation all identical. But you will ask slightly different questions. I will answer with slightly different words. So what we would do is differentiate, oh, say, oh, 10 to the 30th different versions uh, per second. Um, an enormous number. It may be more than that. I and haven't that, done the calculation and that continues recently. To, and that continues to... It continues to differentiate. Geometrically, uh, geometrically increase. Right. So the complexity of the multiverse, gigantic to start with, is growing with time. And you're differentiating between, uh, as a generator, between a, um, a branching in time and what seems to be like a differentiation because all of these different versions were sort of there originally, and then some of those paths were chosen? Yes, I think that's the better way of thinking about it. I think the way we can try to picture this is with a little drawing here. Um, what you can see is that at the very beginning of time, everything, all of reality, started at the initial singularity. It's right there, okay. And everything sprang out of this initial singularity. Now, this represents one branch, and here is another. There are actually an uncountable it, infinity of infinity, such branches. Yeah. So what happens is, remember, in each one of these um, lines, each one of these curves... World lines, if you World will. lines, exactly, because time is going up this way, and this is space. This pictures two different classes of universes, one of which reaches a larger size at maximum expansion than the other. Of course, I cannot put the full complexity <laughs> on a single piece of paper. But the idea is that we all start identical, and we are forced by the laws of quantum mechanics to start in an identical way. What happens is the universe expands very rapidly out of this initial state. The, all of the different versions start to differentiate because the laws of physics now allow more complexity to exist. And as time proceeds, complexity increases even more. And the way that's expressed in the multiverse point of view is differentiation amongst the various histories. There are an uncountable number, an uncountable infinity of initial identical universes, which then start to differentiate once the reality comes out of the initial singularity. 
And these are all really real. They're really present. They're guaranteed to be present by quantum mechanics. Now, we are not, of course, aware of these other versions of ourself. But think about it. 400 years ago, people dismissed the Copernican worldview on the grounds of we don't feel ourselves moving as the Earth rotates and as it moves around the sun. Therefore, Copernicus must be wrong. But the laws of physics tell us unquestionably the Earth is rotating on its axis and it's revolving around the sun. We have finally accepted the laws of physics and we can see in our mind's eye the Earth rotating as we see the sun come up and go down. Notice the ancient language. We're still using the ancient language in which it's the sun moving rather than the earth. We now can see, at least in our mind's eye, if we believe the laws of physics, the earth and not the sun move. Similarly, we should believe the laws of physics that tell us there is this uncountable number of other universes, uncountable numbers of you's and me's now undergoing this identical interview out there.